and welcome to my easy to understand guide to Lupin or Lupin and representation. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying AQA A-level media studies as it's currently a set text on that specification. The current set episode for study is series one, episode one, so we're going to be focusing on that in this video. So at the start of the episode we're seeing people from uh, you know black and other minority backgrounds, people who are mainly immigrants um, and they're working as cleaners or janitors within a museum. So immediately putting my, people from minority backgrounds in what we consider or what society considers as kind of low class manual labour jobs which generally pay quite low salaries. So in general in the episode what you see is this kind of divide between people who are immigrants and ethnic minorities and people who are kind of natural born citizens of France who are primarily white um, and you get this kind of binary opposition between these two groups of people and when you see the kind of immigrants and the ethnic minority uh, characters they're often dressed in the same kind of grey uniforms it makes them seem quite dehumanised because they all look the same um, and it makes it feel quite kind of quite sad and dull and depressing whereas when we see the um, French citizens and when we see uh, the primarily white characters they're often dressed in sort of tuxedos and suits and beautiful dresses with jewels um, and they're in much kind of wealthier settings like the museum at the front of the museum um, and uh, you know it feels much wealthier and higher class so it's almost like the show is trying to suggest there's a real inequality uh, and a real class gap as well as a kind of racial gap between the characters within the show. It's clear that the kind of immigrant cleaners are not trusted. Um, they have security guards, they have x-ray machines, they have people that search their bags, there are cameras. Um, so it's this idea that, um, you know, in France maybe the message is that, you know, generally there's a distrust of immigrants and uh, minority um, groups within society. And certainly at the beginning of the show, we get a lot of eyeline matches um, from the character of Lupin to the security cameras. He's watching, he's looking at the computer screens and the cameras and the treasures. And we're seeing that he's checking these things out. It makes him look quite suspicious because we wonder why he's looking at these things and what he's planning. So perhaps at the start of the episode, representing, um, reinforcing those stereotypes of people from minority backgrounds, people from um, asylum seeker or immigrant backgrounds being involved in things like crime and suspicious activity. We see characters have a real distrust of these um, minority characters as well. So there's a, a white lady in a car um, and when Lupin and his dad um, approach the vehicle to help, she immediately locks the doors. She just assumes that they're doing something bad. Um, so there's this assumption that they're, they're going to be involved in crime, that they're going to be suspicious, that they're going to be dangerous. And we see Lupin has borrowed money from some quite dodgy looking people. He's walking around in his hoodie with his hood up and that kind of acts as this symbolic code again to make him feel quite suspicious. He's walking through what looks like an estate with lots of graffiti and it's quite run down. And this contrasts with the much higher class, richer, more glamorous areas that we see. Um, so it kind of adds to that feeling of binary opposition between the sort of immigrants and um, the citizens of France. But actually the show is quite clever. Obviously, as we get further on in the episode, we realise that the stereotypical representations are actually being challenged quite a lot in the episode. So it's very clear that the main character is super clever. Um, very cultured, very gentlemanly, and so perhaps challenging audiences' assumptions about how they often judge people from these backgrounds. Um, you also, um, he actually says a line in the show at some point where he says, you saw me, but you didn't really look. So it's this kind of message that actually society often underestimates or completely ignores people from minority backgrounds, immigrants, uh, people from working class backgrounds, because there's a real link here between race and class in the episode. 
Um, and so it's perhaps reinforcing this idea that they are underestimated and misjudged all the time. We actually see the cleaners trying to lay out the red carpet and they're kind of hoovering it. And this kind of white guy just walks across the carpet whilst they're trying to clean it. So perhaps adding to this idea that, you know, it's almost like these cleaners are invisible and that nobody really cares about the job that they're doing. Um, so reinforcing the kind of class and race divide within the show. When Lupin is um, bidding on the necklace uh, at the auction, um, lots of people are giving their bids. Um, but when Lupin puts his bid in, the auctioneer actually takes a tablet to check his credentials before carrying on with the auction. And again, this suggests that they're treating um, black people very differently than they would treat the kind of um, white people who are bidding. Um, so again, reinforcing this idea about discrimination within France. And this idea of class and race is backed up when we see in the flashbacks, uh, Lupin's father is arrested on suspicion of stealing the necklace, which as an audience, we're pretty sure he didn't do. Um, but uh, it's not made clear in the, epi in the set episode. Um, but the fact that the police assume that he did, the fact that the kind of white wealthy husband assumes that he did, um, and that no one really cares to investigate any further. The fact that the rich, wealthy, white wife, she doesn't actually intervene. She doesn't admit that she's the one that gave the, the dad a book and allowed him to be in the library. Um, she doesn't defend him in any way. Um, so perhaps, again, reinforcing this idea that there's a, a lack of trust, there's automatic suspicion of people from minority, lower class backgrounds. Um, and that uh, wealthier white characters are not supportive, they're not honest, and they're automatically very judgmental. It's also important to look at the representation of gender within the episode. So for example, if we start thinking about representation of men, it's very clear that we're getting this idea that men are doing kind of quite physical jobs. So, um, you know, they're doing um, chauffeuring, they're doing janitorial work. But I suppose it's also the representation of doing quite domestic work as well. When, and I guess that that's where gender ties into the representations of race as well. It's very closely linked together um, because we often think of women as doing the more domestic chores. But actually in this, you've got men doing cleaning. And um, But I think it's this idea that it's because they're working class men, whereas the richer men we're seeing in positions of business and power and entrepreneurship. Is that a word? When he meets what seems like his ex-wife at the beginning of the episode, um, she talks about him probably not make, being able to hold down his job for very long. She talks about whether his son is even going to want to see him at the weekend. It kind of suggests that men are a bit feckless. You know, they're not dedicated. They're not responsible. They're absent fathers. They're not part of their children's lives. Um, and they're not really mature to be able to hold down a job and to be consistent within family life. And this is a fairly conventional representation of men within the media. We're also seeing men involved in crime, uh, so beating people up, the kind of um, what look like drug dealers or money lenders, um, you know, threatening people involved in the heist. So again, quite physical, aggressive representations of masculinity. But we do see some more complex representations of masculinity as well. So we actually see that um, Lupin has actually quite a good relationship with his son. At the end, we see some really nice scenes between them that are really loving. And in the flashbacks, we see him with his own father. Very warm scenes, very loving scenes. It shows how much he respects his dad and how his dad treated him really, really well. So we get these scenes where men are shown as much more emotional and, and very close to each other and their children. Um, and that, that challenges those stereotypes a little bit more. So perhaps creating a more complex representation of men here. At the start of the episode, we see uh, Lupin's ex-wife and we kind of assume that she's doing most of the parenting because it seems to suggest that he's just seeing his son on weekends. Um, and that's quite a fairly conventional representation of, uh, of women and femininity. Women are shown as quite passive in this episode, which again is fairly stereotypical, reinforces those gender stereotypes. So we see women in quite passive roles. The woman in the car seems quite vulnerable. She just tries to lock herself in. She can't fix the car on her own. She needs, um, you know, Lupin's dad to come and fix it for her. 
we see uh, the lady who owns the jewellery, um, the daughter, well, the daughter of the lady who owns the jewellery, um, you know, very glamorous makeup, fancy dress, seems quite objectified as she walks down the stairs. So we see women as kind of passive objects. She doesn't really do a great deal of talking within the episode, she, so she just kind of seems to be this glamorous person displaying the necklace. And when she's younger in the flashbacks, we see her as a kind of teenager in the flashbacks. And she seems quite provocative and sexualized. So she's kind of teasing Lupin. She's displaying herself within this kind of yellow bikini and she's tempting him by uh, trying to bribe him with a kiss. So representing women as quite sexualized um, and also quite manipulative as well. The representations of race and discrimination and injustice are probably going to be quite relatable to a huge number of audiences, whether they are audiences from minority racial backgrounds, whether they are audiences from immigrant backgrounds, whether they're audiences from working class backgrounds. A lot of people are going to be able to identify with these representations and it's going to feel like they're being seen and recognised within the show. The extract definitely positions the audience for Lupin to sympathise with him as a character and particularly to feel empathy for him when he's a child. He's represented in a very sympathetic manner through the use of body language, facial expressions and some of the narrative things that happen to him in the episode. And this sympathetic representation helps to paint him as an underdog in this story that the audience wants to champion. We want to see him succeed, which is why when he does, the audience feels very satisfied. We start to realise that actually the representations are more complex and they're not just simple stereotypes. And it makes it clear that the TV show is actually quite progressive in the way it's representing class, in the way it's representing immigrants, in the way it's representing black people. Um, it's challenging our expectations as a society and it's going against those stereotypes. And so the representations might seem quite progressive to some audiences who might enjoy that. You're not going to please every audience though and some people are going to find these representations too progressive. There are some people who have this real kind of bee in their bonnet about things being politically correct or woke um, and so they might not enjoy the fact that there's so much challenging of stereotypes within the episode. But it's really important to understand that these representations are really linked to social, cultural and political contexts within France. Um, so France has a, a huge number of um, immigrants. Um, it's where a lot of immigrants and asylum seekers in particular, there are refugee camps, asylum seeker camps within France where asylum seekers are processed and um, they have to be assessed to determine whether they'll be granted asylum, whether it's in France or whether it's in other countries, whether they get transferred to England, etc. Um, and that has caused quite a political divide within France. There are some audiences, some members of society who are very accepting of immigrants and are very open and liberal. Um, but there is a huge rise in far right political groups who are very anti-immigration um, and anti-diversity, um, anti-ethnic minority and who have actively campaigned against asylum seekers, immigration, etc. And so perhaps this episode and this series are really reflecting that kind of political, social, cultural conflicts that are going on within France and French society. It's reflecting the fact that there is, un unfortunately, a huge amount of xenophobia uh, within France. There's a huge amount of discrimination um, and there's a real fear within society of certain groups of people where they've been dehumanised in the media and made to seem dangerous. Um, and so the TV show's representations are kind of playing on these representations and challenging audiences' understanding of and assumptions about these groups of people. So that was my easy to understand guide to representation in Lupin or Lupin. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for other videos that are going to be relevant for you. If you would like a video that I don't already have, leave a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.